Air and propane. Good luck at getting one of those. Uh, but we're gonna be we're gonna be replacing this old, the dependable '92. Uh, reusing the return. We're gonna still keep the stand because I learned my lesson on this one because this is a garage. Um, on the uh, they had a mana job that I did, so we're gonna reuse the line sets and the vents. All right, here's the here's the unit here. Morning, Tyler. This is a two and a half ton Goodman, and I don't know what we got going on here. <clears throat> yeah, so we may just leave that there. Yeah, I pulled this coil off, and here's another Goodman coil melted. Got a little hot at one point. That's just crazy. It's got to be a Goodman. All right, as I said in my other videos, I use this Frost King camper tape. Uh, but I like to put these, I like to cut strips on the top of the furnaces and on the filters. It just, I, to me, it just makes a, a nice clean seal. You don't got to use caulk tape. I mean, sometimes I have to put some tape down, but... It's mainly just uh, to help keep things sealed and clean. So I just basically cut it to size and throw it on and trim off the excess. Tyler, how's your gobble? So a lot of you ask, how come I don't use the Bosch furnace along with my Bosch coil and the heat pump? It's just because my supplier doesn't keep the Bosch furnace in stock. And the second reason is it doesn't have a stainless steel heat exchanger. I love stainless steel. They're, as long as it's done properly, the, the heat exchanger is bulletproof. Um, if I'm wrong, leave it in the comment section below, but that's the reason why I like the Armstrong furnaces with Bosch. All right, it's it's humid. <laughs> uh, so I'm getting ready to disconnect everything. I got my trusty hot shot because we got little demon flies running all over the place. So I've been getting a lot of hate mail on using these liquid sight glasses. This is an Emerson. Um, I've used these for years, years. Um, it's not code. Like I said, you don't have to use them and they're not needed. I'm back to using wet rag again by refrigeration technologies. Um, like I said, it has its applications. Typically, normally just use an actual wet rag, but. So, this is my raisin rig, Uniweld. And, you know, it comes with the, the reason why I got this, because it comes with the Captain Hook. But I just purchased the Rosebud tip. So it looks like, uh, from what I've been practicing it with, looks like it might work pretty well. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
so much nicer. Kind of control everything a lot better with this rosebud. All right, got my heat pack, heat blocking putty against there, so I don't gotta worry about anything in there getting messed up. So, I'm actually, I gotta probably should put some around here too, and I will. Spin just got done making some metal. He's the metal man. We'll see. Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> cool. All right, so it's about 10 after 2, about a minute later. We're down to 900, 800. I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to let that run. I'm trying to get it below, a, below 100, and then we'll do a decay test as long as it doesn't go back up to two we'll be good to go all right it's about uh almost 35 after two she's tight it's a good back Okay, so this is I'm gonna this is what I do. So there's no Schrader valve in here. There's a Schrader valve, the core in here. We're still sitting at 47. Uh, what I do is I put my Schrader core in this area here. I got this ready to go. And this is how I've done it for a minute. If I can get a, a solid ground. So what I do is I crack the liquid side open just a little bit then I turn this as this starts rising starts rising I remove it that way I don't introduce any atmospheric air condensables into the system and as, as that's bowing in I open this up and I put my Schrader core inside Just like that, close that, open this, open that up, and I fully open everything up. Then I open this side. So with this ICM I, uh, 518, you can actually wire this thing up as a whole house surge. Um, put it in your circuit panel. And then uh, this one here is going to be on the fuse disconnect. So we're going to basically connect it to L1, L2. And then the white will be for our ground. I'm going to turn that power on downstairs and that light should come on. And nothing like working in water because the wall's peeing. got the green light green light go and then we have power on here 76 degrees out so I'm gonna button this up and 
we'll have this thing up and running a little bit. Wiring here out for this uh, BC100 Bosch thermostat. So we got, oh, that's our reversing energizers and heat. We got our common fan, heat, AC, and then the power. Okay, getting ready to fire this thermostat up. So we're doing dual fuel. thermostat to control balance point I want that down the ball oh wait a minute heat 30 degrees uh, heat pumps one stage everything will be controlled on the board on the furnace we have none. And it is two o'clock. Two o'clock on the button. Uh, we are August tenth. schedule complete just like that and uh, I'll go downstairs and fire everything up with the jumper and then I'll come up and check this so I didn't have enough propane pressure so Corey's outside tweaking up the regulator uh, we want to have about 13 to 14 inches of water column um, He's uh, slowly cranking it up outside at the regulator so I can get 14 inches incoming pressure because I can only get around 8 when this thing fired up. Alright, we're at 10. I can just jump her now. W1, W2, and then I'll set everything back with the dip switches down there. So we're good to go. Should back drop down to 4.5. Yeah, I'll tweak it up just a little bit, just give her a tickle. There. Now we'll button things up and kick on the old Bosch. All right, got everything wired up. Got everything to L1, L2 ground. Got my thermostat wires tied in. We got uh, the white for the heat. And then uh, we got yellow for AC. And this is my common wire and this is for the reversing valve. So here's the JW2 switch. Right now it's on three ton. And to turn this into a two ton, you just switch it down. But this is actually two and a half, and this will do all the B boops and calculations on every, the airflow and everything. Looking about an eight to ten degree sub cooling. So I hit the force button there, and that kicks it on high. Um, it's your full full ramp on right now. I'll go down here in a minute and check amps on the main breaker. I got a new meter. I got the Fluke 902 FC. I'm gonna check uh, this leg here. So we're we're running 10 amps, which is on high, and I it, it'll probably never run high. All right, there's the furnace. Corey did a great job doing the metal. The tape is nice and smooth. I, Corey did that. There it is. It's set for two and a half tons. Three amps of power is all it's pulling. And it's quiet. 
Do you know why? Because it's a box. So I'm here to tell you if you guys are on propane, you guys need to look at getting one of those because this will save you a whole bunch of money on your propane bill. And this is super efficient. Very efficient, people. Three amps. It's set for two and a half tons. It's on where it needs to be. Three amps is what that Bosch is pulling.